I think, yeah, I think that's in shot. What's up tech nerds, Jay's Two Cents here and I've got a video that I think is gonna be kind of important. Now recently we talked about the new launch of KB Lake and the upcoming launch of Ryzen and what those two CPUs have in common is they're gonna require Windows 10 to have full support from Microsoft. And that really got me thinking, what the heck does that mean? What does that mean full support? What happens if you try and install an older operating system like 8.1 on something like KB Lake. Guys, I would try Windows 7, but I don't actually have an ISO for that, so sorry. Like we talked about in Tech Talk, I don't actually bootleg stuff, so <laughs> sorry. I did a decent amount of research going into this video because I was curious as to if anyone has actually tried this. And believe it or not, I was having a hard time finding any concrete information of what's gonna happen if you try installing an old OS on KB Lake. So here's what we're gonna do. I've got my i5 7600K back here running at five gigs, the same machine I talked about before and it has got a GTX 1080 Gaming X for MSI in there. I'm gonna do two things. I'm just gonna do a Cinebench run and I'm gonna do a Metro Last Light run in DirectX 11. The problem is there's, there's no way to really do this test and see definitively what it means when Microsoft says it's not supported. Cause not supported doesn't mean it won't work. It just means they're not gonna support it. Like if you have a problem, they're gonna be like, oh well, not our problem. But what happens when you try it? Now I'm using Cinebench because I consider a stress test to be a pretty good indicator of whether or not a piece of hardware is solid. Now this doesn't mean it's hitting all of the different tasks that a CPU has to do, which means it's probably missing some of the errors that might pop up if we end up doing this on an OS that's not supported. Because remember the operating system basically scans your system when it's installing it, and then it gets everything ready, ready and says, oh, here's the hardware you have, here's the INI files and all the things we're gonna load to make that hardware talk to the software. So that's where the problem could possibly lie. Now obviously this is gonna work because it's supported, it's Windows 10, but Remember, this is the baseline. In case you're curious, an i5-7600K at five gigahertz is giving me an 830 score on Cinebench R15. So you guys can do your own test to kind of compare. It actually beat out a 4770K at stock speeds. That's cool. A non-hyper-threaded CPU beat a hyper-threaded CPU. I like that. The reason why I'm using Metro 2033 Last Lights benchmark is because it's a pretty stressful DX11 benchmark. If I wanna compare if there's any kind of performance difference or any difference whatsoever, I'm just trying to see what happens before and after. I have to at least have something that's comparable on both OS's. So I can't use a DX12 benchmark because then I can't run it in Windows 8.1. Yeah, we'll just let this test continue and see what we get. But also what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm taking the exact same SSD that Windows 10 is on right here, a Savage 960, and we're gonna end up uh, putting Windows 8.1 on here, loading up all the same stuff. And the first thing we're gonna test though is whether or not updates will even work because Microsoft says it's not supported. When it does its updates, it's all based on hardware and stuff. So who knows, we may not even get as far as being able to do this test. But that's kind of the point of this video. So the average frame rate was exactly 160 FPS. Yeah, the 1080 is pretty badass. Why am I not using a 7700K, you might ask? I've got bigger plans for this guy. Let's set him aside. All right, let's get Windows 8.1 loaded on here, or at least try it, and let's see what happens. Installation's done, reboot time. This is now the moment of truth. What happens when we get into the desktop? I think it's gonna explode. Thinking, thinking, getting devices ready. This is when it would see what CPU is in there. Thinking, and black screen for a little while. It's been sitting like this for a couple minutes now. Hmm. Well, well, we'll give it a little more time. It's been several minutes now. It's just, up. Oh, look at this. We got a blue screen here. Uh, watchdog violation, that's what we got. That's funny that right when I hit record, this popped up. We'll let it reboot and see what happens, but watchdog violation. Well, I don't know, this time we got a little bit farther. Okay, now we're checking for updates. This might be the part where it comes back with like, I don't know what CPU you're using. I think it's weird that we blue screen during the installation process, but then again, it is still running the five gigahertz overclocks. So we might've had a funky thing happen there. Um, but once again, we wait. During all of like the doomsdayers online with their articles saying that this wasn't gonna work, this was the part where they thought that we would see the most incompatibility would be during the updates, where it's trying to apply updates, there's no INI files or such available for that. Did we just restart? Oh, no, there we go. Okay, updates are done. So clearly it was able to update itself. And set up our apps. No, don't do that. Oh. The Microsoft ecosystem, the most unfriendly ecosystem there is. 
You know what they say, the only thing IE is good for is downloading other browsers. So far, everything's working just fine. Like you would never know you were on a processor that's not supported with a certain operating system. But I'm gonna go ahead and install all my drivers and I'll reserve my opinions to the end. So this is like the third lockup though I've experienced so far since that blue screen I showed you. Uh, I don't know if it's related to the overclock if you wanna know the truth because that overclock has been rock solid in my Windows 10 environment. I've been using that five, there it goes finally. I've been using that five gigahertz overclock all along. In fact, I even bumped up the voltage a little bit since some of the other crashes thinking it might have been OC related. But now I'm not so sure because some of the articles said that random crashes and freezes could be a side effect of the quote unquote non-supported CPU. And it seems to happen every time I'm installing something. So I'm gonna pull the overclock back just a tad to 4.9, at least to see if I can get through the installations. Transition. Now it does actually recognize KB Lake. It says right up here, Core i5 7600K KB Lake at 3.8 gigahertz. That's the turbo clock or whatever. It's currently running at 4.94 gigahertz. So I've got my five gig overclock going right now. We're gonna start up Cinebench here. And this is to me gonna be kind of the real telltale sign on whether or not there's any sort of stability issues at least. Now I, I'm not testing for differences in performance right now. I am checking for differences in stability. Now we've already seen several crashes, as I mentioned, I still can't, I still don't know what caused that. I mean, the watchdog error usually is related to like an overclock, but I've been running that same overclock without any problems the whole time I've been running the KB Lake system over here. You guys have seen, I've left the system up. So don't know what that one's all about but I expect performance here to be pretty much the same. I don't expect there to be any differences here. Now I can't think of any testing scenario I could do that would hit all the different types of instruction sets that the CPU would go through uh, to check for any sort of compatibility issues. But I will say this, it updated fine. Nothing said, uh oh, this isn't compatible, nothing at all. So if you were out there buying hardware and just throwing it together and you didn't know that Microsoft is only supporting Windows 10, then you might not think there was ever a problem. So we got an 822, so there's eight points difference. I mean, it's a little bit of a performance difference there. Can't call that CPU support related in any way, shape or form. Metro Last Light, I don't expect there to be any real performance difference. Same card, no overclock on the card the first time. There's no overclock on it this time. I expect it to be pretty much the same as we got the first test on Windows 10 was 160 FPS. I guess we'll just have to see exactly what we get this time around. 157 FPS, so three FPS different, 157.07. So less, just under three FPS difference. So what does it mean then when Microsoft says that they're only going to support Windows 10 with KB Lake? Well, do you remember that video I did where I tried to do the unofficial three-way SLI of GTX 1080 when Nvidia said they're only supporting two-way SLI? Remember how I saw weird crashes or games that wouldn't even load or really just bizarre behavior? That's a perfect example of something that's only supported, where that means nobody's checking for, coding for, or fixing issues found in any sort of test environment or s s particular hardware environment that's outside the realm of what's supported. So if I started having weird issues with KB Lake in Windows 8.1, any of those bugs submitted uh, are not gonna be looked at by anybody. If I even called up Windows Tech Support and was like, hey, I'm having this weird problem, and they see that I'm using KB Lake on an OS that's not supported, they'll be like, well, I'm sorry, we can't help you, that's unsupported. That's basically what that means. It doesn't mean it won't necessarily work. As you see, it worked fine, at least for the small test configuration that I did here, or the test scenario that I just used. But obviously there's nothing I could do here right now that would test every single iteration of use case for the CPU and this OS. That's just impossible for one person to do. It would take a long time to do that. But AMD might be a different story. At least KB Lake is built on Skylake, which is supported by Windows Now and 8.1. That doesn't mean in the future Windows isn't gonna start putting a mess pushing out a message to you saying, hey, your CPU is not supported on this OS. I'll update to Windows 10, and you start seeing that crap all over again. Or even worse, locking down your OS and having it not work at all anymore because you're using an unsupported CPU. That would be an extreme dick move of Microsoft, but let's not put that past them. Microsoft makes dick moves all the time. But AMD's Ryzen is built on an entirely new CPU architecture, something that Windows has never seen on the older OSs. So if the drivers and such needed for the OS to work with the CPU is not even existing in the older OSs like 8.1 and older, then it may not work or install at all. That's something I will be testing when Ryzen comes out. Anyway guys, there you go, it worked fine for me. If you guys have tried this, comment down below and let me know if you had any weird issues and what they were. I'm surprised that I didn't couldn't find a single video or anybody talking about actually doing this online. So I figured what the heck, I would do it myself. It was an easy enough test. Sound off in the comments, guys. Hit like if this video helped you. Hit dislike if you thought it sucked. 
And uh, if you thought it sucked, then give me a suggestion as what you think would have made it better. Anyway, time to go, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, I'll see you in the next video.